What's up guys? Welcome to Motocross Action's 2022 Kawasaki KX450 tested video. Today we're going to be diving into all the details on this 450 model. This is our second 450 that we picked up for the new model year. This bike was all new in 2019. Got a few updates the last few years including the handlebars and the clutch. Unfortunately, it didn't get really any updates besides graphics for 2022. So we know this bike like the back of our hands. I'm excited to ride a brand new freshie today and explain to you guys all we know about the KX450. All right guys, we are back at Glen Helen, the MXA Dirt Dyno. Why do we call it a dyno? Well, when you go to a dyno, you're testing the engine, you have all the variables are kind of eliminated. You get to calculate all the numbers. For us and for me, Glen Helen is my dirt dyno. I know how all the bikes feel going down that long start straight away into the Talladega corners. You got all kinds of soft sections on the track and you also got hard pack sections. So today we started out, track was nice and fresh this morning and it got rough towards the end of the day. So great way to test the 2022 KX450. This bike, as mentioned already, didn't get any updates for the new year. The graphics are slightly different, but they basically look the same, just a little bit smaller. Other than that, last year was big for the updates on the 2021 KX450. It wasn't an all new model, but it got a few significant upgrades. Um, the handlebars, the KX450 was the last bike that had the standard 7 8 inch bars. It went up to the 1 and 1 8 inch bars, the oversized handlebars, the Renthal. I believe it was an 839 bend. So that was an upgrade last year. It also got the Belleville washer spring in the clutch. So this bike got a hydraulic actuation back in 2019 and a lot of people thought that that was going to help the durability and the clutch feel on the KX450. However, they were still using springs inside of the clutch um, and they weren't durable. They didn't upgrade the clutch basket or anything inside of the clutch internally. So the clutch was still slipping, having lots of issues. If you remember Eli Tomac, when he switched to Kawasaki, he had lots of issues. So for 2021, they went to the Belleville washer spring. It's kind of a copy of what the KTM has had for a few years now. They also increased the diameter by seven millimeters in the clutch basket. So that made it bigger clutch, um, more oil is able to get into the clutch to keep the plates cooler and overall just working better, stronger. The, the clutch plates also got upgrades as well. So now there's three different part numbers for the friction plates inside of the clutch. You got a different plate for the outside, different plates for the meat, the middle, and then a different plate for the inside, the very first uh, clutch fiber plate as well. So they're also angled fibers. So it, it's pretty different, um, it's pretty exotic really. None of the other aftermarket brands uh, have clutch plates like this, but the stock OEM Kawasaki's are a little bit confusing and you need to make sure you got all the numbers right when you're installing a stock clutch in your KX450. So because the Kawasaki KX450 hasn't changed for 2022, we have lots of information that we know about this bike after riding it through the 2021 season. The engine is what it's really known for. It's snappy off the bottom end, and even though the horsepower is low on the totem pole, this bike is the slowest 450 on the market besides the Suzuki 450. So it's lower than the KTM, Husky, Gas Gas, Honda, Yamaha. It's down there on peak horsepower. However, this bike kind of tricks you. The way that the engine picks up with this just a snap of a throttle is super quick. We call it clean and brisk. That is kind of the first two words that come to mind. It makes the bike feel a lot faster than it really is because you get on the gas, it wheelies a little bit, it has a really exciting bottom end where the KTM 450 and the Yamaha 450 and even the Honda 450 nowadays, they're a lot smoother off the bottom end and they have turned to a totally different style of power band. But those bikes really pick up in the mid range and high up in the RPM where they're making a lot of horsepower. KX 450, it's not that fast when you're going down the straightaway, but the way that it picks up coming out of the corners makes you think that it's faster than it really is. So KX450 is a fun power band, something that the MXA Wrecking Crew likes. It definitely is a nice character trait to have on this bike, even though the peak horsepower isn't quite as strong as some of the other models. And so sometimes people say, and I even say it as well, it's a 450 four stroke. This thing is super fast. Nobody uses all the power that you can get out of a KX450, right? We all say that from time to time, but one thing that we gotta break up when you're racing this bike, if you're looking at the KX450 as a potential race bike, going down the start straight, you want a bike that can get the whole shot. And honestly, it's gonna be a lot harder on a KX450 than it will be on a Yamaha 450 or a Honda 450.
Talking a little bit more about the KX450 mapping, diving into the couplers on this thing. It's super easy to swap between couplers. That's one thing I like about this bike. It's not like some of the other models where you can change it on the fly or change it on the handlebars, but the couplers are easy to change out. It comes with the couplers. When you buy your bike at the dealer, it comes with a green one stock. The white one is aggressive and black is mellow. So we went through the range of them today, even though they haven't changed for this year. The mellow one is definitely easier to ride. It's better if the track is slick or if you're just coming back from injury or if you want just a little more mellow power band. It definitely tunes the power down a little bit, makes it a little bit easier to ride. Green is stock, feels pretty aggressive to me. Uh, picks up clean and quickly coming out of corners as already mentioned. The white one should be noted that we've tested this coupler on the dyno. It doesn't make the bike any faster. It just makes it pick up even more snappy coming out of corners and just kind of wakes up the power band. So white coupler, the aggressive one, you're not gonna get a lot more power or really any more power but you will feel a little more snap, which is kind of an interesting and, and uh, hard to think about when the green one is already so snappy on the stock bike. Getting into the handling on the KX450, this bike is very unique. The suspension is pretty soft. MXA Wrecking Crew, we like to go up a spring rate in the forks. The Showa spring forks have 5.0 springs. Uh, we like to put a 5.2 spring in one of the fork legs and leave the 5.0 in the other one. That kind of balances it out as a, making it into a 5.1 spring rate in the forks. That helps you get a little more hold up. The rear is a 5.4 shock spring. It's also pretty soft as well, but overall, the average rider in the MXA Wrecking Crew, we have a lot of vet guys um, that ride this bike at REM every Saturday. They like the suspension on it when they go up a spring rate in the forks and leave the stock spring rate in the shock. So for me, riding the bike today with the stock forks at 5.0 springs, really soft. This bike was super soft for me today. I had to go in on the compression clickers. I had to slow down the rebound clickers just to try to get the forks to hold up a little more and try to get the shock to hold up a little more. So overall, suspension is soft in its stock form, but because we know and because we've ridden this bike so much, we do know that when you get the suspension set up for you, when you stiffen it up based on your weight and speed, this bike is a great handling model. So we like to say it's light at turn-in. What does that mean? Basically that whenever you think about turning, the bike will turn for you and you don't really have to lean too, super hard. You don't have to turn your bars super hard. You don't really have to force it to turn. This bike will turn with you. So I like to characterize this bike as nimble. It feels pretty light on the track, even though it's uh, not really the lightest model. It's nimble, easy to ride, easy to get into corners. And that's a positive trait about the KX450. Another big topic on the KX450 is the brakes. This bike didn't get the, the 240 millimeter rear brake rotor that the KX250 and the KX450X cross country models got last year. This bike still has the 250 millimeter rear brake rotor that's came on it for a few years now. And we've always complained about this. It's super touchy and just way too strong for a rear brake. In comparison, the 250 millimeter rotor on the KX450 is 30 millimeters above the KTM at 220 millimeters so it's quite a big difference when you compare them like that also it's it's really touchy at the rear brake we had to lower it all the way down today um, had Mike Chavez from Kawasaki give me as much wiggle room as I could something else that the MXA Wrecking Crew does sometimes we'll cut off the top three threads off of the rod inside of the master cylinder for the rear brake that gives you a little more adjustment just to bring the rear brake lever a little bit down also, sometimes we'll uh, chamfer the, the rear brake pads, basically just kind of shaving off the edges of the rear brake pads, trying to make them less grippy. Um, overall, it's definitely a challenge, and it's really weird to see that the KX250 last year was a huge update to that bike. That bike was basically all new last year. It got the 240 millimeter rear brake rotor and the KX450X cross country model did, so we're wondering why the KX450 didn't get that upgrade, but still stuck with the 250 millimeter rotor. As for the front brake, it's super touchy as well, but we don't really have any complaints on that. I liked it. Touching on a few of the specs for the 2022 KX450, this bike is gonna retail for $9,499. So it's actually $100 more than it was last year, even though it didn't get any upgrades. The Kawasaki KX450 used to be the lightest Japanese 450 in the class at 234 pounds, but Honda came in last year, 2021, with their all new model and dropped it down to 233. So Honda has the claim on lightest Japanese bike. But when you compare these bikes to the KTMs, the Austrian bikes, those bikes are at 223 pounds, so quite a bit lighter, 10 pounds lighter than the Honda.
Other specs about this bike, the peak horsepower is 56.94 horsepower and it hits that peak at 9,500 RPM. Also the peak torque number comes in at 36.26 torque and that's found at 6,900 RPM. So as mentioned already, this is the slowest bike besides the Suzuki in peak horsepower numbers. Now diving into some of the pros and cons about this bike. Our quick list, the pros, this bike is light for a Japanese model. It's nimble, easy to move around and easy to handle. It's one of my favorite handling Japanese bikes. It's also very adjustable. So this bike, the bar mounts are adjustable. They can be moved forward, backwards. Um, there's four different positions on the bar mounts to move it around. The foot pegs are also adjustable as well. This is the only brand that has adjustable foot pegs. So you can drop down the foot pegs just slightly. There's also couplers that are super easy to change the mapping on the ECU. So a lot of adjustability on the KX450 and makes it good, especially for a guy that's a lot taller, wants to make a little more room around the cockpit. Other good things about this bike, the power is fun, easy to use, it's snappy, but not too fast. It doesn't hit so hard out of the corners that you're losing the back end or wheeling too hard. Also another pro about this bike, the clutch is definitely better now, but still not as good as a KTM. Diving into the cons about this bike, it's really not fast enough for a racer who wants to get a whole shot down the straightaway. We all know how important starts are. They talk about it every Saturday when you're watching Supercross or Motocross. If you're racing this bike, you're definitely gonna wanna invest in an aftermarket muffler or something to make it a little bit faster. Another big note that we haven't touched on yet in this video, durability is not a strong point for the KX450 or any Kawasaki. 250 either. Um, the bolts strip out easily and one of the reasons for that is because you're using steel bolts but they're going straight into aluminum threads inside of the frame, the subframe, especially on the, the air filter. The air filter is mounted from the side kind of like KTM's been doing for a long time. Honda's doing it now. Kate Kawasaki's been doing it for a few years so I like the side access getting in and out. Um, taking the air filter in and out is a lot easier now. A couple of issues with it. You have to use a 10 millimeter bolt to get the seat bolt off and then an eight Eight millimeter bolt that goes into the subframe to get the bottom part of the side number panel off so it's a little bit awkward having to grab uh, two T handles not really ideal also that eight millimeter bolt that goes into the bottom of the side panel it is the most stripped bolt in motocross history uh, or at least in my lifetime I would I would have to say everybody I know who's owned a KX450 or just had one for a few days has stripped out that bolt and it's because it doesn't have steel inserts in the aluminum frame um, like some of the other models will have you'll have a steel bolt going into a steel insert into the aluminum subframe. This bike is a steel bolt going into an aluminum frame. The frame has aluminum threads and they get messed up really easily. More on the du durability issues, the chain guides and sliders wear out super easily on the Kawasaki models and the chain roller is definitely a big one to keep your eyes on. We, we recommend using TM Design Works for the Kawasaki KX450. Also, the muffler on this bike is super long. Uh, it doesn't really affect you on the track unless you're thinking about weight. It does affect you when you're taking a picture of the bike and you just see that massive aluminum muffler sticking out the back. Also something to note, if you're gonna buy an aftermarket muffler, you need to be sure that you use the right brackets or the right rubber grommets because the subframe on the KX450 is known to break off. So the stock muffler that comes on the Kawasaki 450, like I said, is super long and it uses a rubber grommet as we show here in the video. That allows this, the muffler to flex a little bit to move around. But if you get an aftermarket muffler that doesn't have the rubber grommet like FMF and you use a solid mounted muffler onto the frame, Odds are, after some time, you're gonna break your subframe on your KX450. I've given an FMF muffler to my friend, but I forgot to give him that little FMF bracket that they give you. He broke his subframe while doing a works race, and so uh, it's, it's a common issue. It happens to a lot of guys who own KX450s, and so if you buy the FMF, make sure to use the little bracket that they give you to add a little durability and a little bit of strength. To that to that pivot point also pro circuit they make aftermarket mufflers that use rubber grommets there so uh, just be sure to keep your eye on the subframe where the muffler connects to it on the kx450 all right guys so that's pretty much the meat and potatoes of our 2022 kawasaki kx450 tested video for me, being an MXA test rider, the motocross action crew, it's our job to break apart these bikes, break them so we can tell you what breaks, tell you what's the best part about them, tell you what we like, what we don't like, and really compare them all um, so that you guys can be better educated when you're going to the dealer or when you're buying a used bike from your buddy, buddy or buying a bike online. We want you guys to be as well educated as you possibly can so that you continue to, uh, to have fun on your dirt bike and know that you're getting a good bike when you're going to the dealer. So, 
KX450, MX Air Wrecking Crew, we like the bike. We like the handling of it once we get the suspension dialed in. We like the power of it. It's easy to ride. Uh, we do have issues with durability, but if you know these things going into it, you can keep an eye on them and uh, you can make your K Kawasaki KX450 a great bike for you. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, motocrossactionmag.com. We got all kinds of news, reviews, race results, and more. We got lots of information about this bike on there as we got a full test from last year. We got our shootout from last year. The bike hasn't changed. We're gonna be writing another article for Motocross Action Magazine on this bike, breaking it apart as much as we possibly can using all the information we learned over the years. So thank you guys for tuning in and make sure before you go to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Also leave a comment down below on our YouTube channel. Let us know what you guys think about this video, what you wanna know about this bike and other future bikes that we're gonna be testing throughout the 22 model season. Thank you guys for watching. If you still have some more time, click the thumbnails now to see our latest videos.